Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Stranger Danger. Stranger Danger. <laughs> it is. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Mashanda. Hi. Welcome back. We haven't Thank seen you, you in how long? 20 years? No, 2018, when the book came out. Yep, yep. Mm. How are you? I remember. I'm great. How's your energy? Amazing. Okay, okay. I think, you know, I think my energy is always amazing. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty steady. You set your affirmations in the morning? Always. Yep. What was All it this day. morning? Um, I think the first the first thing I said to myself when I woke up was, it's, it's going to be a beautiful day. Okay. And you feel great. You Absolutely. Feel great. Even with the rain and everything? and cold. I love the rain, because living <laughs> in San Diego now, we don't get any rain. Why mm-hmm. San Diego? It's just gorgeous. I know, but like, what was the connection? Because, you know... You used to live here. I've lived here my whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, 2020 happened. My grandmother, who raised me, one of the closest people in my life, passed away in 2020. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, and she was the main reason why I stayed here so long, because I was taking care of her. Um, My son's father moved out to San Diego in 2019, and he struggled. My son struggled with it a lot. Mm. And I... Right. So, you know, he lost that connection. It mm-hmm. was a weekly thing. So um, I've been wanting to move to L.A. for years, but I stayed because of my grandmother. And when everything happened, I went out to San Diego, spent a month, and fell in love. I was like, I don't want to live in L.A. Mm-hmm. I want to live here. It's like nature everywhere. And um, it ended up working out. Mm. Yeah. You reignited your love for music, too? Yeah. Okay. I definitely think that had that setting had a lot to do with it, you know, mm-hmm. really emerging back into it. And your son had a lot to do with it also. 100%. He's an influence on everything. So totally. Can you tell us why you've put out an EP? It's been how long since your last project? Oh, my project? God. January Joy came out in 2005. Yikes! Jesus Christ! Seventeen years later, you're time. like. So what? It wasn't. I know you did. You, it wasn't that you did had a, a lack of love for music. Was it the industry? Okay. More the industry, right? Absolutely, the industry. Um, you know, I felt a little Black misplaced mm-hmm. and a little unwelcomed, and you know, even blackballed. Would you say go so far? As a tiny, t- yeah, a little bit. You know, I heard things here and there. People felt like they had to choose sides. Mm-hmm. I f- still feel like a lot of people do feel that way. And I get it. You know, I know people. You never got that, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. That must have been on them because I've never felt like well, I I've couldn't never play thought a that record or Absolutely. Mashonda I've Mashonda never felt that from you Mashonda guys. Mm-hmm. host a show or club. I've Ever. never felt that at all. But you'd be surprised. That was you'd on them, then. You'd be surprised. Totally. Okay. Totally. And, um, you know, it was a little discouraging. And as much as I love music, I've been doing music way before I met my ex, Mm -hmm. you know? So it was me. And my son came in the room last year in November, and he said, Ma, you're viral on TikTok. And I was like, what does that mean, you know? (laughs) (laughs) And... um, You ain't that old, you ain't no viral. Listen, you know what's going on. I'm pretty much... I've (laughs) I've been in a bubble. I was never on TikTok until he told me this. (laughs) No, I believe that. They told me, somebody said, up here said, you're, Charlamagne, your you're, you're sound on TikTok, your sound's like, going viral. What? I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right. And it was a record that I did in 2003, mm-hmm. a freestyle I did over a Busta Rhymes joint, The Honey, I See You. Mm-hmm. It had like millions and millions and millions of interactions wow. worldwide. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, maybe this is a sign. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe I need to really get back into it, especially now that this generation knows my voice. Mm-hmm. So um, I did just that, you know, and I created a body of work that I love. Mm -hmm. And it's art, you know, it's not a traditional album. It's it's from beginning to end a story. Mm -hmm. What's the story based on? Love Mm -hmm. and my my transformation. I don't always use the word healing because I feel like it's more of a transformation. Mm and just the ups and downs of love. You and know? you did some visuals with it. I did a lot of visuals. Felt a lot of energy yes. with the interaction with yes. you and your main leading man. Yes, because I wanted to <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to create a visual that was refreshing mm-hmm. compared to what's happening now in visuals where it's, you know, I don't feel like I don't feel like we're showing love 
and romance and what that looks like anymore. I feel like it's almost like a dying art. Do people even know what that is anymore? This is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take it back to what that looks like, like having an argument with the person you're in love with, but then coming back together, not canceling him, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's what Complicated is all about. Mm -hmm. Did your son help you pick the beats and help you produce? Nah. He did not at all? He (laughs) has kept him out of it? He didn't want nothing to do with it. Really? You know, he has his own <laughs> genre of music. I think your son makes music. <laughs> Take my mom, let me no, help you out a little bit. No, you know, he's like, when I do make something that he can relate to, he's like, yeah, this one's good. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, to him, it's like old people music, you know? <laughs> 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 Did you play the EP for him? And oh, he a, loves a, it. A, okay. He loves it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is a God's plan affirmation? So the God's plan affirmation, my grandmother always used to say, put everything in God's hands. Mm-hmm. So at the end, um, that's what I say. I say it's God's plan and it's in God's hands. And that one starts with waking up and blessing the day. And I say, I want to start, I want to start my bless. I want to thank my day with you. So I'm speaking to the person listening. I want to count my blessings starting with you. So that's to let you know you are a blessing, right? So it's interactive, the, um, the music and the affirmations, because I want people to really, I feel like our culture, sometimes we have a hard time understanding how to even get into meditating. I have a lot of people ask me, well, how do you meditate? What is an affirmation? So I wanted to incorporate that into the EP just to give people a small idea of how to get started. And I did it over a very relatable kind of beat. Mm-hmm. So now you work three with, of them. You work with a lot of people in this industry. Did you reach out to any of them during this project? Did some of them say, nah, I'm not effing with you? Has, has everybody nah. came with open arms? How, how I didn't doing? want to work with anyone in the industry. So I, I worked with two new young um, producers. Mm-hmm. Um, Lanisha Nelson, who's an amazing vocalist and songwriter, engineer, and um, Quan Keys, who is a sick producer. He's a church guy. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to work with new, fresh, you know, undiscovered talent. Mm-hmm. I don't really want to put anybody in a situation where it was like, all right, let me make sure it's okay, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So I just did my own thing. That probably helps to create a trauma-free album, too. Absolutely. Because you're not bringing no old triggers. No old triggers. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, certain things like, you know, I like the song Runaway. Yes. And the story behind that song in particular, I think, is interesting because it can be such a relief when you're like in a bad situation and you get out of it. Baby, it is freedom, right? It's um, runaway. Runaway is just about walking away from a situation before it gets out of hand, Mm -hmm. like knowing when to respect the red flags, you know, and I think sometimes we prolong things that don't feel good because we're comfortable in there or Someone said, you know, the sex might be good and we don't want to part ways with that. Why did you say someone said? Because when we had, when we spoke. (laughs) Have you ever stayed with somebody too long because the sex was good? No. (laughs) (laughs) Too quick. (laughs) That's never been like a leading factor. What are some red flags for Mashanda? Red flags for me now, definitely communication. You know, if we can't be transparent and consistency, Mm -hmm. I I love consistency. So it's like those two things have so much to do with like your foundation Mm -hmm. and what's what's what it's leading up to. Um, So I look out for that. (laughs) How is is dating now for Mashana? Dating is interesting. Dating can be ghetto. <laughs> dating can be dating really can be ghetto, ghetto you know. Ghetto here. I'm thinking ghetto with me. I'm thinking McDonald's. What's ghetto for Michelle? Well, if you're thinking McDonald's, That's think ghetto. about dating. <laughs> you know, versus Mr. Chow or well, something. When the fries are good and hot. Exactly. <laughs> so what do, you mean, um, what do you mean ghetto? You know, I just feel like people get into these interactions and relationships mm-hmm. and they're not emotionally ready not mm-hmm. mentally ready and then they just come in with all their stuff and kind of like project onto you and it's like this is not what I signed up for mm-hmm. um, and you know a lot of younger guys have been coming Hollering. my way and I'm like <laughs> I don't know if we can if we can Lala said that too when she was up here last yeah 
Yeah, and they're so like bold and intense mm-hmm. about it. It's like are they, they coming in your DMs? Are they meeting you in person? Both. Do you like the boldness? I like, yeah, I do like when, you know, people know what they want and they are showing you that mm-hmm. they're very serious about it. But it's just interesting because I'm just it but these younger guys do they they are pretty more pretty mature mm-hmm. compared to I guess 10 years ago what a younger guy was. Mm-hmm. Um but it's been interesting because at first I was like, well what do we have what do we even have in common? What what are we going to talk about? Mm-hmm. But uh <laughs> I don't know. You know, I don't want to say that I would never date and when I say younger, I'm talking like 28 to 31. Okay. It's pretty young. What's the wildest date you've been on that uh, a younger man is taking you on? Where did y'all go? What did y'all do? I mean, I can't even think of I want to know the ghetto one that you said ghetto. Because something popped in your mind when you said ghetto. <laughs> the McDonald's ain't that ghetto, especially if you high as hell. And y'all leave, y'all, y'all coming back from somewhere and get them hot fries late at night. I'm not talking about ghetto in a sense of form, like physical ghetto. I'm yeah. talking about like... The the interaction yeah, itself, yeah, yeah. you know, the spirit like, of people, people don't call <laughs> yes. anymore. Sometimes they just only text you, yeah. or they Facetime you with no notice. I don't like that. You don't like the Facetime? I don't do. Yeah, FaceTimes. I told you, I don't really answer. We have FaceTimes. to we have to plan a Facetime. Word up. <laughs> like, hey, are you busy? Um, is it okay to Facetime? <laughs> right, right. What, what did you feel? You, what did you feel you needed to tell yourself when you named the album "Note to Self"? So I'm the type of person I'm always. If something comes to mind, I'm always writing it down. I'm doing mm-hmm. voice notes. I'm journaling. Um, and I think, and I, I've noticed that when I don't do that, I forget what that moment of like, oh, mm-hmm. wow. So I think everybody should start writing things down. Those those moments where you like connect the dots in your head, like that happened because of this. Mm-hmm. You know, it's always like something in the past that kind of triggers something in the present. So... For me, note to self is really it's an accounting, it's a document of of everything that I've I feel like I've survived and made it through and and not only survived and made it through, but I'm able to take the lessons mm-hmm. from it. You know, I haven't forgotten the lessons. Let's talk about the song Positive Distraction for a second. Okay. Because sometimes you're like, Okay, you know, there's a lot going on and I just need something to make me feel good and feel happy. Yeah. Are you okay with dating somebody who you know maybe there's no future with, but they are a positive distraction? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I feel like everybody needs that. But that's also a conversation. You don't want to lead somebody on, you know. It's like we come together, we have a good time, and then it's okay. We can part ways Mm -hmm. and pick up right where we left off from Mm -hmm. the last time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does this... Are you doing this all on your own, this album? Is it independent? Or are you... Super independent. <laughs> you produce, so, direct your own videos. So everything. So what makes this successful to you? What's what's a successful that, album? The fact that it's done and out. The fact that I <laughs> did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the fact that I worked, put my money into it. Um, I didn't ask anybody for anything. I paid everybody that helped me. I don't owe anybody any money. Okay. Right? I feel like I um, also created opportunities for creatives to come in and show what they can do. Um, Even the artwork, down to the artwork. Down to every mm-hmm. font, you know, all the small details. Um, it's, it feels really good to to create a body of work and then release it and know that you, you pretty much did it on your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One thing I always give you credit for is artwork. Like as far as you curating these art shows, mm-hmm. helping these young artists, but also helping people get their collection up. Yeah. Because Mashonda will send me like pictures like this would be great for you or this artist, she's a young black girl from Brooklyn and I think you should get this piece yeah. of work because she really wants to sell it to somebody that, you know, somebody like you. Mm-hmm. And so she does always hit me up about things like that. And so can you talk about your love of art? Because this is something you were doing for a long time. I remember you... Um, had did the book release. I think it was the book release at Donna Karen's yes. place, Donna uh-huh. Karen's house. It was amazing, by the way. I was like, <laughs> uh, what is this? But even just being into artwork, where did that come from? I've been a collector um, for the past 25 years. And that sounds old as hell. But I've always collected art and I've always um, supported artists. Mm-hmm. So it's just a part of who I am. Um, 
but I started Art Leader in 2016 because I wanted to create a platform to to give women in art more of an opportunity to show their work and to sell their work. So I do I do exhibitions, I curate, you know, um, galleries, and I'm getting ready to do a couple of museum shows. And for me, it's all about having people of color collect people of color, mm. you know? So when I connect Angela with an artist, an emerging artist that I know is doing what they need to do to take their career to the next level, I know that I'm not only helping Angela, but I'm also helping the artists. And um, music and art, you know, it, it collides. It's, it's, it's pretty much the industries are almost alike. And the artists, they need the same kind of support as musicians do. For people who want to collect art, how do you determine? Because people always ask me that, like if they come to my house and they see what I have, and they're like, what made you decide to buy that? And for mm -hmm. me, it's just a feeling that I get if I see something, if it evokes any type of emotion in me, yeah. if it makes me think of something, if I think it's just beautiful. What, for you, would you tell people who want to start collecting art, how do they go about getting their collection going? I think the first thing is to make sure you buy art that you, if you have children, that you want your children to grow up looking at, mm -hmm. you know, and something that that's going to, that's going to, because it, it becomes a part of your psyche. Like you, you wake up, you see it, you go to sleep, you see it. So make sure that you love what you're looking at. Don't just get into it for an investment, even though it can be a great investment, but definitely buy work that you love. And I think that's what you're so you're so good at. How can you tell when something's a good investment? People ask me that all the time too, because I'm like I don't really know. Mm -hmm. No, you you just buy art because you love it, which is great. You're like a real collector. But the I mean, once you are involved in the marketplace, and you, it's like stocks and bonds, right? You check the market. You you can see what what art is going up, what's selling at auction, um, the price points, who's in museums. Who, who's with a good gallery. These are all ways that you can tell if an artist is going to be a quote unquote good investment. Mm. Let's go back to your other art, the music. Cause, yes. Cause you said this album is described as a healthy, realistic outlook on relationships. Mm -hmm. But then the, this first single is called Complicated. Mm -hmm, Cause that's real life. <laughs> so complicated relationships can be healthy? Yes. Okay. Because you gotta learn from it. Is there such it. a thing as a relationship that's not complicated? Right, I, every human relationship, mm -hmm. relationships with self is complicated. Because humans are complicated. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Friendships so are complicated, families. I think families. tackling that conversation is super healthy. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the video? I'm not sure. Is that the one where you and the guy the all over each other? Well, we're not all <laughs> over each other. <laughs> <laughs> there are moments where we're fighting. Okay. But that's like, for me, that video is the perfect example of a complicated relationship. Mm. How do you argue? I always think it's important in relationships <laughs> that because you are at times not going to get along, mm -hmm. and I do feel like your style of arguing and how you guys communicate during that time is important. How do I argue? Are you a yellow? Screamer? I'm not. Do I sound like no. I would be yelling? No. no. I'm more like, however I argue it works because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ha I, and I don't want to say. It Very may be, firm. You just shut down. It's super firm. firm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't shut down because I do believe in communication. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have a way of checking people. You're laughing. What are you laughing? Because it's something <laughs> on your mind. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking of reactions. And I do have a good, because I pay close attention to everything, mm -hmm. every detail. I'm paying attention to you when you don't even think I am. So when, when it gets to the point of arguing, I'm going to call you out on things that you did not think. So you're an attorney? Pretty much. <laughs> she got that mental I'm Capricorn. book. <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. Capricorn. So What's your birthday? January 9th. <laughs> I'm going to call you out on things mm -hmm. that you had no idea I even paid attention to because mm -hmm. I didn't say shit about it before. Is that healthy, though? Because well, sometimes how... people bring things up and an you're attack. like, why don't you bring it up it's when it attack. happened? Because sometimes, because sometimes can, it can attack, fester. Like it's said. not because you know why? I don't ever want to be that person that's coming across as the mother or the corrector or... A judge. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to correct a grown person every time 
I see them doing something that I don't agree with. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think that's healthy because that's not my child, mm -hmm. you know, so. But I am going to pay attention like those are the red flags. What bothers you the most? In a relationship, whether whether you're dating somebody, what you something that you can't stand, whether it's I don't know I time stand. or is it? You yeah, said I mean, lack of consistency. Yeah, lack of communication. Lack of communication. Lack of consistency. I think a very annoying thing is um, when people play around with my time. Like if like if we like if you say a certain time. Mm. You know what really irritates me? Not only from dating, not men, just in general. Like if we mm -hmm. have a, a 9 a.m. meeting, don't hit me at 945 and say, oh, I can't make it. You knew you couldn't make it you probably 845. at 845. <laughs> you like, knew you, you couldn't, already. right? You, you knew you couldn't make it at eight probably. So mm -hmm. that those type of things. I agree with that because I always feel like lateness is really a disrespect to the other person because it's 100%. like your time's not important. Yes. And that's how I look at it. I remember I dated this guy and what I did to him and he never was late again after this because he would always be late. And so what I did was the next time that we were going out, I just went and did something else. And then when he called me like 30, 40 minutes, I was like, oh, I didn't think you were coming. Right. And right. Because you weren't here, so I left. And he was never late again after that. Yeah. Time is very important. Absolutely. Time is like one of the most important things. Um, especially when you're a parent, mm -hmm. because you plan everything. Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, yeah, be considerate. Right. What made you focus on the last five years as opposed to like your whole life of dating experiences? As far as the EP? Yeah. Um, it wasn't only, I'd say it was more so the last 10 years. 10 years, okay. Well, because coming out of a marriage, you know, I had to give myself time to really get yeah. ready for dating. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I didn't want to jump into anything. So once I hit the road, I was like, okay, I'm in it. Let's see, let's see what people are doing out here. And <laughs> Did you like what you saw at first? <sighs> at first, I don't think I was conscious enough to, to really pay attention. I was just having fun, mm -hmm. yeah. And how is that, is, is everything, dating somebody else when you have an ex, right? Do they always look at your ex like it's, it's, it's insane, a comparison? It's insane and it's ridiculous you know, it, and it's be been difficult. a very large, it's been a huge hindrance and and a complication, yes. I could imagine. It's annoying. Um, if your ex worked at McDonald's, I'm sure it'd be a lot it'd easier. It'd be so much easier. <laughs> 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 it'd be so much easier. Um, but some guys are Insecure. a little intimidated and insecure. Mm -hmm. And um, some guys act like they're not, but they are. And then once in a while, you'll meet a, a guy who really does not care, who ev doesn't even really know mm -hmm. who the person is, and those are the ones. Those are the young those ones are, that you were talking about. No, those are the ones that I like. Uh. Yeah, those are the ones who, who, who are just like, who? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to have fun. You open to marriage again? <sighs> you know, <laughs> marriage can be great, but I think I did it. And I'm good on that. Um, That's exactly what Lala said. <laughs> yeah, like verbatim. She was like, "I did it. I, I did it was that. great. I did it. But it I'm was, good on that. It's good when it's good. But I don't know if I believe anymore. And no offense to the people that are married. <laughs> she um, said the same thing. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I just. Uh, ah, you know, I, I don't know if I should even say this. Say it. But I just feel like. As humans, mm -hmm. individual souls on a spiritual level, that what marriage means to a lot of people kind of stunts growth. What do you mean? Individually, as a person. Because if you're married to mm. someone that's on the same level with you with this, then it's perfect. Mm -hmm. But if you're married to someone that doesn't think that you need to be somewhat interactive with another human at some point. Oh, so you're basically saying you don't believe in monogamy. 
Absolutely, I do. Oh, okay, okay. Where did you get that from? Because she said you can't. No, 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 no. Interact doesn't mean. Yes. What is wrong with you? Doesn't mean intercourse. No, no, no. He thought intercourse when she said interact. I heard her say interact. I thought she was saying it in a nice way. No, no, no. Interact, not intercourse. Yes. That's yes. What I got. Oh, like okay. just having a conversation. <laughs> Hold on, like for instance, okay, here's a perfect <laughs> example, and I thought this was so dope. I recently went to Qatar, and not knowing anyone but wanting to do things, my friend connected me with his friend, mm -hmm. who's a married man, but who's also like super cultural. Like he 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 knows what to do, where to go. He literally picked me up. We connected on WhatsApp. He picked me up. He took me to everywhere I wanted to go. We spent the day together, did all these things like restaurants, malls, all this stuff. And then he, he introduced me to his wife and his wife was super cool. I was like, thank you so much for letting me borrow your husband. It was dope. Mm -hmm. I don't think a lot of people are prepared to understand. Ditto. Really? That dynamic, that human that very necessary human interaction. What do you think? Would Gia be okay with that, Envy? Well, you having a tour guide? <laughs> <laughs> no, him being the tour guide. For, him being a tour guide. For a woman that he's never met before. I wouldn't but... put myself in that predicament, but so no. Unless, <laughs> unless I knew the person. Like, if I know the person personally, then I, I, my wife... Majority of my it. friends are, home, are, yeah. are, home, are women. But if it's somebody that I don't know and just flying in... <laughs> Fuck no. See? Not in a zillion years. Yeah, yeah, that's different. You know what I mean? It, like, and it was different. I was even I was even like, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me She let just me heard about it and called. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she said, what? Right. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Who's your talking? <laughs> Who'd you say earlier? <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh my God. Would you be okay with that with somebody you were dating if he It would have to be. Because if that person and you know he was hitting his wife the whole time and I I would want to be in a situation with someone that I trust mm -hmm. enough to go do that. Absolutely. You feel like you could trust somebody that much though. Yeah. Like, is it hard for you to trust? No. Because he, I he mean, he didn't try to holler. Well, he wouldn't say anyway, right? He didn't, he try, didn't to try to holler. No, 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 no. Because people have told me that men and women can't be friends. And that is a damn like, I, like I literally ninety five percent of my friend circle is women. I have I have great male friends. And some people but I'm also, also not throwing myself and giving sexual energy to these people, you know? Like, I didn't give him any sexual energy. Mm -hmm. It was like, I knew he was married and was like, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't look at him that way. Right. You know? Just and thank so, you for helping me. Right. And some people also feel like they don't want to make new friends either. Because I've heard that a million times. That's like, so problematic. That's some other new culture. Who is random new person? Culture stuff. It's mm -hmm. like, no new friends and... How are you gonna grow? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, how are you gonna evolve? Sometimes no your new newer friends. friends you might like better than your old friends For who real. you, <laughs> you just feel obligated to be friends with. The guy that picked you up, I mean, he has to be okay. You're still thinking about no, it. I'm thinking about not it now. like this. No, because if it's like if a family member called and said, Hey, I have a, a friend coming in town, that means that person means something to you. Yes. So that means that that yes, I would go pick them up and do something. Because other than that, I'm I'm trying to think if if I would pick somebody up that I didn't know, but I would only right. do that if a, f a close friend said, hey, Mutual this friend. is my sister, Absolutely. please look out for her, or this is right. my so-and-so. So, yeah, I can see that happening. But right. his wife still didn't have to agree, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? That's true. Could you could you deal with a man right now that hasn't done any work on himself? Like, never no. been to therapy, not on no journey of healing, nothing? Mm -mm. I, don't, <laughs> I don't have the time mm -hmm. yeah, or the energy. I have one son. Mm-hmm. You think you've been in love again? Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Look at her blushing. Are you, I you're have in love now, it seems like it. <laughs> I mean, even for me now, and love is also very different. Mm hmm. You know? Um, well, you have a new definition of it? Yeah. Okay. What is yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I think in love is kind of like a infatuation. It's very temp. It's, it's a, it's a, I don't want to say temporary. Some people do say they're like been married for years and mm -hmm. they're still in love. Mm -hmm. But I do kind of think that it's um it could be selfish. It could be very um what's the word? Um conditional. 
in love? Mm-hmm. Like what happens if that person does something that doesn't make you so happy? Are you still in love with mm-hmm. them? You know? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, I, I when I get into these relationships and, and the love starts coming into play, it's always about, will I be able to be okay with you even if you do something that I can't stand? You know, like I love my son. If he does something I I don't like, I'm still going to love my son. Mm -hmm. Am I going to look at you that way? Can we get through that? So for me, that is more important than being in love. Mm -hmm. Could you date somebody in the industry again? I wouldn't want to. I haven't. Why not? Mm -mm. I know why not. But you wouldn't rule it out. You say you don't know why not because you just hate no, the industry. No, I do know why not. Does. A lot of sexually transmitted to demons, <laughs> demons in the industry. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> and I mean, I'm. This could apply to everyone in this room because mm-hmm. we are industry people. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Um, I just think that we are jaded in a way. Um, we've been overexposed. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of our purity has been. Painted. Mm. So, but that's not just this industry. That's in life. I feel like music industry is a music different. industry. Is something different. It's a little different. And people change as they get older too. I feel like there's a time when yeah, everybody's going wild, and then everybody calms down. Sure. But that's why everybody in therapy now seems like yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe like you know, some forbidden fruit wouldn't be bad. I'm okay with that. <laughs> but it's like, like you said though, the person just really has to be aware. Mm-hmm. I think we're all aware of our things. It also mm-hmm. has to change, too. You know, mm-hmm. you, you think about <clears throat> when we all came up together, right? It was a wild time. That's what we've seen. Fun and wild. There was yeah. nothing showing us the other side. Yeah. But now you're, that's starting to change. You're starting to see that more, you True. know, which is a way better thing, you know? True. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just something about the whole, even the word music industry. It's like, mm, I don't think I want to. Anybody in the music industry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Even I just said the song Forbidden Fruit. Now, I read Uh that part of that is also somebody told you you taste like a sweet fruit. Piece of fruit. Jesus, Angela. Is that true or false? No, everything that I write about is true. Okay. Yeah. What fruit was it? Don't give out your secrets. That's a whole other book. Um, album, I EP. will. I, no, it is a whole other book, and I actually wanted to to do a whole little thing on it. But I a will whole book s- on forbidden fruit. No, about self care. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> Damn, baby. Okay, exactly. exactly. <laughs> do a whole book on it. I said, okay. About how to take care of yourself, okay. and you know how to how to how to taste good. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. <laughs> I was like, lip service. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mashana did lip service. I figured that, yeah. It was so much fun. Do <laughs> you want to play a joint off the album? What you want to play? Complicated? I want to play complicated. Yes. Okay. So she, by the way, first time directing a video. Yes. Okay. So that's huge. So make yes. sure after you hear the song, go look at the video too, if you haven't already. I love it. I love I, it. I did so want to ask one more question about purity, though. Like, what is purity? Because I don't feel like anybody can be pure. I don't think mm. no human on this planet could ever be pure. So what is purity to you? I think pure, well, I know purity for me is like I said, loving someone unconditionally, mm-hmm. not expecting, um, just really taking them for who they are, um, not coming down on them every time they do something that irritates you, but but learning how to manage yourself. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. checking yourself. Why does this irritate me? Mm-hmm. Um, and when you exchange energy with someone on that level, that's pure. Mm-hmm. And it's rare. Mm-hmm. That's real. All right. Well, Mashonda, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting you complicated. Her. If you're late, she's going to be pure and not come down on you. <laughs> Jesus gracious. Christ. He, <laughs> my God. Huh. All right. <laughs> well, Mashonda, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning. 